Today, I'm reviewing this. The New King James Version Ancient Modern Bible. A Bible that confuses me more than any other, and I like it. So let's grab some coffee and dive into it. Good morning, everyone. You're watching The Caffeinated Bible, and my name is David Paris. And first, I need to give you some disclosure. Thomas Nelson sent me this Bible to review and give away a copy. More on that at the end of the video. They didn't pay me to review this, know my exchange hands, and I don't get to keep it. I have to give it to one of you. They also did not ask to preview what I say about this Bible. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who put my little fill light in here? Okay, this is the Bible that comes in the box and it is a beautifully bound leather edition. Hold on one minute. I got to take this. Hold on, I'll be right back. It's been a very strange transition from winter to spring here. In fact, yesterday it was 75 degrees and today it's snowing off and on. Over 40 degrees colder today than yesterday. And all of this took a toll on poor old St. Francis in our garden. He stood his ground with great valor all winter, but ended up cracking and falling apart. So why do we have St. Francis in our garden? Well. St. Francis lived around 1200 AD and is known for his commitment to poverty, devotion to the Eucharist, and that he called all creatures his brothers and sisters, and is rumored to have preached to the bird. He even persuaded a local wolf to stop attacking the locals if they agreed to feed him. What do you think of that, Penny? So by having his statue in our garden, it not only provides some decoration, but his views on other animals is fitting and he reminds us of our connection to the rich tradition that we have within the Christian church, which reminds me of what this Bible is all about. And I digress here, so let's get back to the review. Okay, back to where I was at. They did an excellent job on this. It has a beautifully bound leather cover, and I particularly like the layout of the pages inside. They really let their typographer have some freedom in designing the layout for this Bible and the result is beautiful. Now you can pick up this ancient modern Bible for around $34 and I'll include a link to that under this video. It runs almost 1700 pages and was first published in 2018. So what's in this Bible? First off, at the start of each book of the Bible, they provide a very helpful, concise introduction to that book. And this covers the author, who it was written to, dating, why the book was written, and key themes within that book. I personally like how they format these introduction pages with large drop cap lettering in a sort of a calligraphy style, much like the illuminated manuscripts before the invention of the printing press. At the very back of the book, they include seven maps, and you know how I like atlases and maps for understanding the Bible. But the feature that sets this Bible apart from almost every other study Bible is how they include comments from various interpreters through the history of the church from the early church down to today. I love this. I've written two books, one of them, three revisions of it, that focus on why we need to be reading from and informed by previous interpreters of the Bible. We have this incredibly rich 2,000 year long history that's a treasury of biblical interpretation. And unfortunately, it's often forgotten or completely overlooked today. And when it comes to interpreting and understanding the Bible, we truly drink from wells that we did not dig. The collection of interpreters that they selected for this is rather eclectic. It ranges from Polycarp to Aquinas, C.S. Lewis to Jimmy Carter. If there's one glaring weakness that I find in this particular Bible, it's the lack of female interpreters. A particularly nice feature that they include within this are concise biographies of the various interpreters that have commented upon the Bible. It tells you something about the person, gives you a quick introduction to them and their place within church history. This is really important because it really helps you if you don't know the difference between your Ambrose and your Ambrose Seister. At the very back of this Bible, they include some additional material. This includes the text of four of the most important and formative creeds within the church, 
the Apostles, Nicene, Chalcedonian definition of faith, and the Athanasian Creed. They also include a list of the sources that they use when compiling the study Bible. Now, what would have been really useful in this listing here is if they included a rough date for when some of these texts were written. For example, when did Origen write his commentaries or Calvin? Now, you can find this information out easily enough on Wikipedia, but it would have been a nice touch to include that here as well. Another feature that I really appreciate is that they include some full-color reproductions of some of the best examples of sacred art within the Western Church. And on the facing page, they include a description of that image. The publishers took the effort to publish this on thicker paper with a high clay count so you get a very vivid reproduction of these images. Now, this study Bible is not intended to give you a comprehensive view of how the Bible has been interpreted for over 2,000 years. That task is just way too extensive for one work. Rather, the quotations including the margins of this study Bible are sort of a best of type of collection. Or another way to put it is that if I were to keep this particular Bible for myself, how I would use it is I would read a passage out of the biblical text and then read the comments from the various interpreters on the side. And I would use that as a jumping off point for my personal reflections and contemplation on that biblical text. What's the real value of a Bible like this? In my opinion, it's that it introduces you to the rich history of biblical interpretation. In this sense, it reminds me of the parable that Jesus told. Every scribe trained for the kingdom of God is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is old and what is new. And that's what they've done with this, and you can see it in the very title, the ancient modern Bible, what is old and what is new. How can you win a copy of this New King James Version ancient modern Bible? Well, I'm going to include the rules underneath this video, but basically they're as follows. First, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. Second, you have to have an American mailing address. Third, in the comments under this or the next video, you need to include a two to three sentence explanation as to why you would like to receive this particular Bible. And I will select using a very precise scientific method to determine the winner and announce who won in about a week and a half. Stay tuned because I have another giveaway next week. Till then, peace.